Hey guys, it's Tom here from Pro Direct Running. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're not gonna waste any time because inside this box here, I've got a brand new super shoe from the guys at Puma. So without further ado, let's sit down and go through some of the tech. So this is the Puma Fast R2, an absolutely outrageous silhouette, which in my opinion is probably Puma's first real top tier super shoe. This update carries over some of the striking visuals that we saw on the original Fast R, but it is essentially redesigned from top to bottom. So first of all, starting off with some key numbers, Puma have really maxed out the Fast R2 with 40 millimeters of stack in the heel and 32 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. From a weight standpoint, a men's sample size is coming in at around 240 grams, which is a little bit heavier than its predecessor and a fair whack heavier than the DV8 Nitro Elite 2. But once we get into some of the other updates that you can find on this shoe, I don't think you're gonna be concerned about the weight at all. So the midsole is definitely the star of the show. And I'm sure there's plenty of you wondering what on earth this little extended bit is at the front. So let's jump into what you can find in the midsole of the Fast R2. The main thing to mention here is that we haven't just got a slightly different formulation of Nitro Elite Foam in the midsole here, but it is a totally new compound altogether. So Puma are actually using an aliphatic TPU. Yeah, aliphatic TPU. Aliphatima Whitbread. <laughs> and I'm not gonna claim what that means, but what they've told me from their testing is that it has been quite a bit more responsive and more economical to run in than the Nitro Elite that you find on the Fast R and Puma's previous race day shoes. The other thing to note here is unlike what you found on the first version of the Fast R where there was a much denser, more traditional foam in the rear foot, and Nitro Elite only in the forefoot portion of the shoe. We've now got the same compound at front and at the back. However, I should still note that the formulation of the foam in the heel is a little bit firmer than what you can find in the forefoot. Again, just to promote that snappy transition through the gait cycle. Now, in terms of look and feel in hand and both underfoot, the Nitro Elite foam that you find on the Fast R2 is fairly reminiscent of the Piva base foam that you'd have found on the previous version of the Fast R and indeed lots of other super shoes on the market. But I've been to... <laughs> Hello. That's all right, we don't mind an interruption from them. Cute. So the midsole looks and feels both in hand and underfoot, very reminiscent of the Piva base foam that you'd have found on the previous Fast R and indeed the foam that you find on other super shoes on the market. However, I've been told on pretty good authority that this aliphatic TPU is both more durable and more resilient than traditional Piva foam, which obviously for a shoe that you wanna get a fair few races out of is very good for runners like me and you. Within the midsole, we've obviously still got a carbon plate, but this version of the power plate is a little bit wider than on previous versions of the shoe. And it's got a bit more curvature at the forefoot just for a bit of extra propulsion. And yes, the carbon plate does indeed extend a little bit further out from the forefoot, which is a first in the super shoe world. And when I first saw prototype images of this shoe, I was a little bit taken aback, but essentially it's there just to increase the lever of the shoe and increase your strike length. Now, obviously this is not gonna increase your strike length by a meter every single step, but you've got to think for a shoe which is designed for the marathon distance, every single step, if every single stride is a little bit longer, then that's gonna add up in the long run and hopefully lead to a faster time on race day. Now, personally, as wacky as it looks, I absolutely love the fact that Puma are trying something new here when it comes to the tech in their race shoes. With the upper, we've got a single layered ultra weave construction here, which is super lightweight, super breathable. And probably the best thing about this upper is the fact that it's designed not to absorb too much water, which is an absolute godsend on those soggy road races. We've got some added robustness from the strategically placed power tape on here as well, which is there just to improve the overall structure of the upper and provide a better lockdown. There are some nice other additions to the upper, like a little bit of padding on the tongue just to avoid any pressure from the laces on the top of the foot. We've got some pull tabs here just to enable you to get the shoe on a little bit easier, which did come in handy this morning when I did my first session in the shoe. And don't worry, we've still got the fin on the back which featured on the original Fast Star, which as well as looking quite cool, does just add a little bit more structure to that otherwise very floppy heel counter. Finally, taking a look at the outsole, there's not a huge amount to cover here, but we have got a nice void in the forefoot just to cut down on the weight. 
and lovers of previous Puma shoes will be really happy to see Puma Grip make a feature here. Anyone who's worn previous Puma shoes will know that Puma Grip is basically the gold standard when it comes to traction and durability. And on my run this morning, we had some very wet roads, we had some loose leaves, and traction was absolutely no issue whatsoever. Okay, so that's a look under the hood at the new Puma Fast R2, but now it's probably time we get into the juicy bit and talk about the performance. So the session I had this morning was two sets of one mile, five by 400, which with the recoveries and stuff thrown in there came out to about 10K of volume. So it's a decent test of the shoe at a variety of different paces. Now I'm not particularly fit at the moment coming off the back of a stress fracture, but knowing that I had these bad boys to test was a lovely little boost on a very cold winter's morning. Firstly then, the step in feel with the Puma Fast R2 was pretty exceptional. I went true to size with a UK eight and a half, and to be perfectly honest, I probably could have got away with half a size down in an eight, just to make it more of a snug race day fit. But I think the majority of people out there are gonna be very happy with their true to size with this one. The tongue has a subtle amount of padding, which I mentioned earlier, and lockdown was easy to achieve first time of asking, which can be a little bit problematic sometimes for me with shoes with this booty style construction upper. Underfoot then, in a world which is so heavily saturated by super shoes, it's hard to stand out. But with the Fast R2, I was very, very impressed. This is not a comparison video by any means, but it was hard not to think of the original Alpha Fly when running in the Fast R2. Now, I'm more of a mid to four foot striker, so when I was hitting that sweet spot in the shoe, they felt absolutely delicious. Now, there's a real sense of compression in the midsole with the Fast R2, but it does have slightly denser characteristics than other super shoes on the market, but I personally like that. It makes it feel a little bit more snappy and a bit more responsive underfoot. <laughs> Now, the original Fast Star was a great super shoe, don't get me wrong, but the updates that we got to the Fast Star 2 seem to make it far more conducive to the longer distances on the road, like the half and full marathon. And that's an opinion that's shared by other Puma athletes out there, with the likes of Rose Harvey opting to use the Fast Star 2 for her most recent marathon performance over the DV8 Nitro Elite 2 that she wore before. So that's just about gonna do it for today's video. But overall, after my first session in the Fast R2, I've got to say, I'm really excited to get some more miles in it. And I'll definitely put it right in that top tier of super shoes. Now, the version of the Fast R2 that I've got in my hands is actually an Ekaden edition with subtle nods to the Ekaden relay on the upper of the shoe. And this version is available in very small quantities right now at Pro Direct Running.